Good morning. <clears throat> so we're going to talk a little bit, uh, introduce you quickly to Johnson Controls. Uh, hopefully uh, we've done a good job of, of marketing and you know who we are. We have three major divisions. Power Solutions is one of them. Our automotive experience division highlights its products and serves the global customer base uh, for basically everything inside the car. Our building efficiency business it concentrates on the HVAC product lines inside major structures like this and building controls and security. Our power solutions business last year had sales of roughly $6 billion. We're 15,000 team members strong. We sell our, our lead acid batteries as private label and also across our privately owned brands in Varda in Europe and China, Heliar in South America, LTH in Mexico, and then our premium Optima brand. We have more than 50 manufacturing sites around the world. And last year we sold 135 million batteries globally. We ch our choice when we come to work is to be positioned in the vehicle energy storage solution. That's where we're today completely focused. We're also uniquely positioned as a company to be able to serve the full spectrum of vehicle energy storage solutions in every region for every platform. Johnson Controls has 170,000 people globally and we tend to pull on their knowledge and their presence and their relationships around the globe. Let's talk about what's affecting the landscape of the vehicle energy storage space. <clears throat> when we talk to our teams, we're talking about the technology shifts inside the space, changing more in the next five years than in the previous 50. And, and what's driving that primarily is emissions regulations and fuel efficiency regulations across the globe. And what you see on the slide here is across the major markets, the European Union, North America, and China, what some of the aggressive CO target reductions are in each of those marketplaces. You see in Europe a 15% reduction by 2015, and then you see an incremental 25% requirement by 2020. In the United States, you see a 15% reduction required by 2016, and in fuel economy alone, the targets that are being discussed are a 40% improvement in miles per gallon performance for the vehicle fleets of our automotive customers. And in China, what we see is a shifting regulation base from what they had been traditionally been following the US formula, but we see them aggressively moving to an EU based regulation and requirements for the vehicle fleet in China. In order to be able to meet those regulation requirements for the OE customers, we see a spectrum of technologies that will be developed to be able to meet those requirements. Starting with the internal combustion engine, which has been around for decades, and is primarily served, as everybody knows, by the flooded SLI business or, or product line. In start stop, which, is, which has had great acceptance in the European Union and is now migrating here to the United States, we're the market leader. We've produced over 20 million AGM batteries since 2007. We have 80 plus market share inside that global marketplace. We know how to, how to bring that technology to solutions at an affordable economic model for our OE customers. The space we're most excited about is in between the efficiency that can be gained in start-stop and what we call as a space as XEV, between the hybridization of the electric vehicles all the way to plug-in and electric vehicles. We were the first to market for lithium-ion based power packs for the Mercedes S-Class and the BMW 7 Series, and we continue to gain business around the globe. What we see is, as a more economic model to be able to help our OE customers meet the requirements across the globe. And we're concentrating a lot of that effort in R&D inside the 48 volt micro hybrid space. We believe what, what that space will evolve to is the ability to take 15 plus percent above and beyond the start stop capabilities that are demonstrated today. And we've been proven, that has been proven on the bench and it's been, pr been proven in prototype vehicles that we have on the road today. The, ec the hybridization of the vehicle fleet today, the economic model, costs thousands of dollars of on cost to be able to achieve the fuel economy 
and emissions regulations. We believe in that microhybrid space that there's a solution that's in the hundreds, not the thousands. What we see it through the next five years as we take a look at our strategic planning horizon is the cumulative production build by powertrain across the globe. Internal combustion engine over the next five years will still be the predominant powertrain inside the world's fleet. Start, stop continues to grow and will be the 60 to 70 percent of the market in Europe and is gaining traction very quickly here in the United States. We do see further prolifer proliferation of the HEV and the plug-in and electric vehicle space, but at near the end of this five-year horizon is where we see the micro-hybrid platforms beginning to be produced on a global basis, first in the European Union, and quickly following probably by China, uh, and then making their way over to Europe. We are in a position with our presence with the global autom automakers to be able to produce what they need to bring an economic solution to the regulations that they need to meet no matter where we go around the globe. So as you can see, there is still a strong future for the lead acid battery and the lead acid technology in, in the space. And our projections show that continuing to go out through 2030 at a minimum. There's a long tail on that. We've made investments very similar to what S Sally mentioned about around sustainability. We're now the world's largest recycler of, of lead acid batteries. Uh, with the investments that we put it here in North America and the expansions that we put in, in Europe. And we think that's the right thing to do. We think that protects the supply chain. That we also think that it continues to make lead acid the most affordable energy storage solution uh, from what it can deliver from a power base. So closing thoughts. We think there's three key things that are going to be required to win in the future. One, you have to be a company with global scale. You have to be able to span across each of those technology platforms to be able to deliver to the OE customers and is as importantly deliver to the aftermarkets in each of the markets that we participate. We have to participate across that technology spectrum uh, from end to end. We're investing more and more dollars every year in continuing to find more economic, economically affordable solutions for the automakers and for the consumer to make sure that we can meet these regulations, which are critical to address some of the risks in the environment from CO2 emissions and, f and dependence on oil and in fuel economy. But at the end of the day, the economics and the economic model will be what drives the solutioning. We see the microhybrid space continuing to push out the need to hybridize the vehicle fleets around the globe, and that with, a, with the right solution and the right affordability, in that microhybrid space, with the and with good adoption rates, conservative adoption rates, we think the world's automo automotive customers can meet their regulations out through 2025. It requires a lot of work. It requires a lot of partnership. It requires global scale. It requires global presence. That's why we're excited about this space. Uh, that's what you'll see inside our booth this week. You'll hear Craig Rigby talk about the start-stop technology and where we see that moving, I believe, tomorrow. So with that, I'll hand it over to Bob.